Why is the intergenerational cooperation issue more difficult in the case of climate change than a simultaneous cooperation issue, which are the standard sorts of examples we've looked at? Well, consider this uh, diagram I've got here, whereby we're representing the various generations, which I've arbitrarily broken up into 25 year intervals down here. And if, so of course there should be earlier generations and future ones, but let's go back to the generation around in 1975, when we first started to get fairly clear evidence of climate change. And uh, we won't go too far into the future just to keep it simple, but you'll see how the pattern will ramify. Now, uh, what we want to think about is, will taking steps to limit climate change have impacts on and how will it have impacts on each individual generation in terms of costs and benefits? And think of the position first of this very first generation. They're wondering, should they suffer the costs of making some emissions? They'll be quite substantial costs if they, if they had cut their emissions. And what benefits, if any, will they get? Well, as it happens, because of the time-deferred nature of the effects of climate change, it's not possible for this generation to get any benefit at all by their own actions. Right? All they will benefit is they might deliver benefits to the next generation, and they'll get, be increasingly likely to deliver benefits as time goes on. So, you know, a smallish benefit here, bigger benefit here, and biggest yet here, perhaps. Now, in, in all sorts of cooperative dilemmas, you have that sort of issue whereby, let's say this generation, we're wondering whether to cooperate, okay? In a normal cooperative dilemma, this generation by cooperating would suffer costs for itself, but would benefit everyone else. But unfortunately, that is not what happens because you can only affect the future, this generation can only benefit future ones. Okay, it'll benefit ones that come after 2050 and so on. But earlier generations stand less to gain from cooperation. In fact, the very first generation cannot benefit at all. So it's often hard to show how it's individually rational to cooperate, but uh, but you can sometimes construct arguments by whereby you try to persuade people that it's individually rational for them to play their part in the collective effort because we'll all benefit. Well, it's just not the case for the first generation that they will benefit. Now, let's say they decide, therefore, they are not going to um, uh, incur any costs. Therefore, no benefits are enjoyed by the generation in 2000. In effect, then, this is just like starting the whole problem again, but now this is the first generation. And again, they recognize that, well, we could potentially make some cuts to our emissions, and that would benefit future generations. But again, it is just not possible for the present generation to get any benefit whatsoever. So initiating intergenerational cooperation is extremely difficult because at each time that a generation is pondering whether to participate, they realize there's absolutely nothing further for them to gain, either from their own contribution or from future generations' contributions. The only benefits they get would be benefits that would have come from earlier generations.